The big question we are asking in toxicology is, how do exogenous chemicals affect cells? We can answer this question at different levels. For instance, many toxicology experiments are performed on individual cells grown in a dish in the laboratory. It is important to remember, however, that all cell types are different, and each cell type has its own internal signaling networks. It's important to understand that everything about how cells respond to their environment happens through signaling networks. That's how biology actually works. Studies conducted in individual cells are done quickly and at a low cost. Researchers simply add chemicals to the cells and ask the cells to respond. The problem is that these cells have limited ability to tell researchers if a chemical is hazardous. It is therefore impossible to conclude that an adverse effect on a single cell means that the chemical is hazardous or that it will cause a complex disease such as cancer. Such real-world effects are much too complex to predict from simple cell models. Of course, most living things are made up of many cell types. These cells and their unique networks dynamically interact with each other to perform functions necessary for life. During development, many cells and molecular signaling networks are working together to create all of the tissues and organs of the body. For example, the brain, heart, liver, etc. are all formed initially during development. When organisms are exposed to chemicals, these chemicals have the potential to interact with and alter the activity of these signaling networks. What researchers need is the ultimate biosensor. This is what we have in zebrafish. A zebrafish embryo would develop from a single cell to a free-swimming fish within 72 hours. Within just a few hours post-fertilization, the embryo is still a tiny cluster of rapidly dividing and differentiating progenitor cells on top of a much larger yolk. Think about it, within hours of fertilization, all the major tissues of a vertebrate animal are being mapped out by those few cells. Because each one has a lineage that in turn gives rise to a major part of the whole animal, an effect in just one of those cells could profoundly alter development. This remarkably complex process, that is nearly identical in all species, including humans, requires the interactions of countless cellular factors and networks. This extraordinary process in zebrafish is very quick and visibly transparent. Using microscopes, researchers can easily see if normal processes of development are disrupted by chemical exposures. During development, many molecular pathways or networks of molecules are sending information signals within and between cells that coordinate essential complex sequences of events. These active networks present many potential targets that could potentially be perturbed by a chemical. By assessing developmental outcomes through day five, the zebrafish serves as the ultimate biological sensor of chemical hazard potential. So it's not just one assay in a lab dish, but instead all cells and networks are simultaneously assessed for hazard using the zebrafish model. So we now see how the biosensor works. Development presents essentially every potential target and network that organisms have. So ultimately, if chemical exposures sufficiently alter signaling networks, it is sensed throughout development and reported by producing abnormal embryos.